gavel. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to call tonight's July 9th Planning Commission meeting to order. Uh, first item on the uh, the agenda here, Ms. Jones, can you please call roll? Ms. Bruce, I'm sorry. sorry. Ms. Schilling? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mayor Anderson? Present. Mr. Mechner? Here. Ms. Schillist? Here. Mr. McDonald? Here. Mr. Kelly? Here. Mr. Pape? Here. And Mr. King? Here. Thank you very much, Ms. Bruce. Um, please feel free to join me in tonight's opening prayer and pledge. My Father, I thank you uh, for tonight's uh, evening events. I thank you for our community, the rain that you provided us, and our health. I ask for your guidance and wisdom, and I thank you for all that you provided to me. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is approval of the agenda. Do we have, uh, can I hear a motion on the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda. Callie Williams, thank you. Ms. Bruce, do we have any citizens' comments signed up? We need to take a vote on that. I'm sorry, yes, thank you very much. Please call, please call for the vote on the agenda. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Ms. Schilling? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Ms. Schulist? Aye. Mr. McDonald? Aye. Mr. Pape? Aye. And Mr. King? Uh, I recuse myself since I was not here last month. All right. Thank you very much. Um, sorry. Now, Ms. Bruce, do we have any citizens' comments? We do. We have Mr. one. Mr. Craig Cropper. Mr. Cropper? Okay. Thank you. Good evening, sir. If you will, just state your name and address for the record. And uh, we just ask to try to keep tonight's comments to three minutes, if possible. Thank no you problem. very much. Craig Cropper, 2480 Fairview Boulevard. Uh, I live across the street from the Sullivan Farm there that's uh, up for discussion tonight about the development. And uh, I know, uh, this is my understanding, I guess, uh, because I'm commenting before they've presented their presentation, but I assume they've got the pod plan that was asked, but no other changes is made. Uh, you know, personally, I guess my biggest uh, concern is the rental, you know. So if you've got, and I've researched a little bit, try to find the difference between apartment and townhouse, you know, the townhouses are nicer you know, nicer built, got a garage on it and all that. But if you've got ever how many, a hundred, and you still are planning on renting them, uh, it's still just a nice apartment complex, basically. You know, if they're, you know, I would like to see them privately owned by individuals, you know. And, uh, you know, if you're building a leasing office, then the plan is to lease them. You know, you're not going to spend, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars on a leasing office if you're not, if that's not the initial plan. Uh, so that's my biggest concern, I guess. And I think, I, I mean, I can't speak for everybody else here or, or the other neighbors, but I wish a lot of people, other people would have came and voiced their opinion. But that's my biggest concern is the, you know, I really don't think Fairview needs more apartment complexes, you know, and whether you call it a townhouses or you call it an apartment complex, it's just the same name, it's the same thing in the long run, you know. So uh, I guess uh, to my comment to the board, that'd be that, that's my biggest concern. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll move next to the approval of the minutes, starting first with the uh, July 11th regular meeting. Uh, can I hear a motion on that? Motion to approve. We have a second. Second. Pate McDonald. Ms. Bruce, can you please call for the vote? Mr. Pape. 
Aye. Mr. McDonald? Aye. Ms. Schilling? Ms. Williams? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Ms. Schulist? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. And Mr. King? Aye. Thank you. Second item would be the June 11th work session. Uh, can we entertain a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Is that McDonald Pape? Mr. McDonald? Aye. Mr. Pape? Aye. Ms. Schilling? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Ms. Schulist? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. And Mr. King? Aye. Thank you. We have no items on old business. First item tonight on the new business will be the election of the Planning Commission chairperson. I'd first like to open the floor for any nominations. I'd like to nominate David Magner for chairperson. Second. Mayor Anderson, and sorry, was that uh, who yeah, was? Pape. Mr. Pape. Do we have other nominations? Okay, we'll close the nominations um, section and open it up for any discussion. Okay, Ms. Bruce, will you please call for the vote? Mayor Anderson. Aye. Mr. Pape. Aye. Ms. Schilling. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Magner. Sub abstain. Ms. Schulist. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. And Mr. King. Aye. Next item on the agenda is the nomination for the vice chair. I'd like to open up the floor for nominations for vice chairman. I would like to nominate Haley Shulis for vice chair. Second. Is that Mr. Pate? Yes. Any other nominations? Okay, I'll close the nominations and open up any discussion from the board. Hearing no discussion, Ms. Bruce, would you please call the vote? Mayor Anderson? Aye. Mr. Pape? Aye. Ms. Schilling? <coughs> Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Ms. Schulist? Abstained. Mr. McDonald? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. And Mr. King? Aye. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda tonight is PC resolution PC 25-24, residential development plan Aidenwoods phase four. It's a 20.55 acre map, 46 parcel 16 property. Current zoning is R20 property owner, A1 home builders. Uh, can I entertain a motion for PC 25-24? Make a motion to approve PC 2524. Allie Williams. I'd like to open up any discussion as well as ask, is there a representative from the applicant tonight for this property? Yes, sir. Aiden Woods phase four uh, is a development plan application submitted by T squared engineering specifically Miss Allison Corolla. The owner of the property is Brandon Robertson with A1 Home Builders. The Aiden Woods development contains a total of 151 single family detached residential lots within four phases. The property for phase four was rezoned to R20 one and two family residential on the May 2nd, 2024 Board of Commissioners meeting. Phase four contains 20 single family residential lots on 20.55 acres. Phase four will create one new 50 foot public right of way that will connect to Pine Street and create an intersection with the existing Bear Trace Road that currently terminates at Pine Street. The surrounding zoning and land use, the five properties to the north and one property to the west are located within Williamson County and are currently zoned MGA-5. The property to the east contains Bowie Park and is zoned AR-15 Agricultural. 
The properties located to the south contain phase three of Aiden Wood subdivision and are located within the city of Fairview and are zoned R20. All surrounding parcels contain single family residential land uses with the exception of one parcel to the north that is vacant and the parcels to the east across Crowcut Road that contain Bowie Park. The Fairview Forward 2040 Comprehensive Plan designates this property as new residential medium neighborhood. The new residential medium neighborhood classification notes the appropriate land use are single family detached residential, single family attached residential, limited to two family homes, mixed use commercial and office space. Um, multifamily residential and civic institutional. All phases of the Aiden Woods residential subdivision contain single family detached residential units. Therefore, the proposed land use of phase four is in compliance with the new residential medium neighborhood classification found within the Fairview Forward 2040 plan. Staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the Aiden Woods Phase 4 development plan in order to create 20 single family detached lots, create one new public right of way, create two open spaces, and install all necessary stormwater, water, and wastewater infrastructure as resubmitted on June 20th, 2024, with one condition of approval as all staff comments to be addressed. And there are a few staff comments I think uh, our city engineer would like to speak to. So currently, <clears throat> excuse me, we have two open comments. I'm sorry, three. W one is planning, two is engineering. Uh, the two engineering ones are uh, kind of asking the applicant if road improvements are going to be proposed along Crow Cut Road. And the applicant responded uh, that no, they wouldn't. And one of the comments we stated was that with lots fronting Crow, Crow Cut Road uh, to show curb and gutter, um, and a note that one lane of Crow Cut Road will be milled and repaved. Um, the other open issue is just changing the categories for critical lots uh, from zero, I'm sorry, uh, to change the nomenclature, the legend uh, for critical lots. There was just, uh, I guess, a confusion on what the slopes are for critical lots. So. Thank you both. Ma'am, could you please state your name and address for the record? Good evening. I'm Allison Carolla from T-Square Engineering. We are at 111 Southeast Parkway Court in Franklin. Um, tonight, we just come to you with a development plan that was, um, as Ethan said, recently approved um, with you guys through and, and with council um, as a rezoning. Um, this is a, an extenuation or an extension, I'm sorry, of the existing Aiden Woods subdivision. We have updated the traffic impact study um, and feel that we do that we are meeting um, the requirements and the recommended improvements of um, the traffic impact study. We're happy to meet all staff um, comments. Curtis, do you mind um, uh, elaborating just a little bit on on the, the critical lot nomenclature. I was just looking at note number five, and it, it mentions that the asterisk is the critical lot. Absolutely. Give me one moment to pull up the Sorry to put plan. you on the spot. <laughs> no, you're good. What this is for. I believe it's note number five. I'm sorry, what was your question? Uh, you had mentioned that there was confusion on the denote, uh, denotation of critical lots. You were, in the slope analysis plan, uh, you were showing critical lots as any lots that were exceeding 15% existing slopes. And it, I, I, I said in the, the comment that it's not 15%, it's 20%. So, you know, just to make sure we keep, right. you do it the same way every time. Right. But that's all it was. Right. Okay. We're happy to work with staff to continue um, on this plan. Okay, so we'll open up now for discussions, questions from the board. Mr. Chair. Mayor Ames. Um, so with our um, other Aiden Woods um, phases, we've had issues with um, construction and dump trucks uh, going through subdivisions. So where is, um, this you know phase where will they be you what what street or what uh entrance will they be using for uh the construction that's a great question so we will end up placing a construction entrance right along bear creek 
Bear Creek Trace, which is just the start of our subdivision. It's the start of our property. It's the beginning of the right of way. Um, technically, um, there is a, another owner. I believe the Jones Company already owns the remainder of um, of Pine Street, and so we would not be able to put a, a construction entrance there. So the construction entrance for this will go along Bear Creek Tra or Bear Trace off of Bear Trace Road. Ethan, are you pointing at something? So Pine, Pine Street is what crosses Crocut. So that's already been platted, so we can't put a construction entrance there. So the construction entrance has to go at our new development, which would be Bear Trace. Correct. Correct, because the, the remaining um, section of that road is already platted and, and it, it's, it's already owned elsewhere. I don't know, maybe. So what the mayor's speaking of is that there's one entrance to the entire subdivision off of Crowcut Road, then Correct. there's another entrance which connects to, help me out, what's the subdivision? Uh, Aiden Woods phases two, one and two, I believe. Okay. And so the concern is that- on to Yes. Castleberry Farms. I understand. I am so sorry for the confusion. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, so I, I can't speak to exactly the way that the construction traffic will be routed. My guess is that it will be routed from Crocut on this side just because of the proximity, because it's so close to this development. Um, although I, I can't speak exactly to, to how it will be. Um, okay. So yeah. under no circumstances do I want any construction traffic to go through the other phases of Aiden Woods back through Castleberry. Okay. So however we need to do that right now, um, that's very important. Staff, maybe you can help me out with that, maybe making that a condition or something. Mr. Greer, is the, um, is the Construction entrance listed on the phase four development plan that, that she just discussed? And if it is, then I think that entrance is applicable to phase four. We can't go backwards to the previous phases that have already been approved, but from phase four going forward, they if would, that is they not would be, stated, it will happen. The construction entrance is not shown in the development plans. It would be shown during the construction plan uh, phase that would be approved by our city engineering staff at that point. Um, we will make note for that construction entrance to be located where Ms. Corolla has uh, spoken and said that it will be, and then we will work to enforce it. Just that. so it's noted, so when it does happen and we get back with Brandon Robertson, we can show him that it's noted on the plans. Yeah. And we are on conventional sewer for this. Correct. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've spoken with Michael Rogers at WADC and the, um, all of the existing infrastructure was sized to accommodate this, uh, this addition. Okay. And then just one last thing you were talking, um, Let's see, Curtis, about, um, or maybe it might have been Ethan, about um, road improvements on Crowcut. Okay, so I guess what I'm, I just need clarification. Did, this, did the city ask for them and then we were told no or do we need them? Or I was a little confused about that. So those lots that run north to south, those, those, those will front Crowcut Road. Therefore, you know, that's lot frontage. And so we're asking the applicant to provide road improvements on their half of Crowcut Road. And so the comment, the initial conversation was, hey, are you proposing any road improvements on Crowcut Road? Which the applicant responded, no. And then the next comment was, hey, we, we need to see road improvements. That was, that was the, the comment. And just for clarification, what's on the other side of the road? 
Bowie Nature Park. Park. That's what I thought. Okay, so Bowie Park's on one side and they're on, okay. Um, and I can just elaborate on that a little bit. So I, I think um, the reasoning for that was primarily just the traffic impact study. So the traffic impact study came back and did not warrant any improvements along Croca. And so that was the reasoning behind that, just purely based on their analysis. Okay. And are there, um, are there sidewalks on, along that road? Yes, ma'am. We yes. are proposing a sidewalk. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think the reason engineering requested for their curb and gutter to be added um, would be if you do not, you'll have driveways and then you'll have to put culverts underneath those. And, it, you know, it's typ typically not seen in, in subdivision frontages. That's all I have. So is the developer agreeable to road improvements? I think we could make that work. Okay. So staff, do we just make this a condition of, of approval? It's an existing condition of approval okay. that all staff comments be addressed. And it is one of the staff comments, therefore it's a condition of approval. Dr. Hogan, do we need to amend the motion on the table to include conditions? Because I don't know that we specifically stated that. It is within the resolution that the condition of all staff comments to be addressed currently is listed as a condition of approval on the resolution. That's correct. So the motion as it is to adopt this as written includes the staff comments that have been discussed. Thank so you, sir. No amendment necessary. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. McDonald. I guess I'm just wanting to have a conversation around the traffic impact study that was completed. I think the most recent was April of this year. Is that the one you were working off of? Is it was actually revised and resubmitted in June. In June, okay. Yes, sir. I'm, I may have looked at the wrong one. I might have been looking <laughs> at the one from April. Um, the concern that I got from reading through that was it, it seemed to identify mainly the intersection that – the intersection we always talk about, Cumberland 100 and Crowcut, and the current ratings of that intersection are not great, which we know that. And naturally, it's getting worse just as things come. Situations like this don't help it. And it seems like in the, um, in the traffic study, it stated that there were improvements needed to that intersection that typically, if the state had not already said that they were going to be doing something, that we would be having a conversation about what we were going to do in regards to that intersection. Is that accurate? I mean, there was a comment in the traffic study that basically said the state's doing this, so it's kind of a, a moot point. Um, I can speak to that, Mr. McDonald, if you allow me. I've got more to go from there, but if we can just confirm that that part's accurate, that, yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's like we, we're all aware that there's an issue there. I know like this subdivision stuff, it's coming. I guess I'm just wondering at what point do we say we as a city have to wait for this intersection to get to where it needs to be so it can function for the existing citizens of this community? At what point do we say we've got to stop adding to this problem because the state, it just keeps kind of getting moved a little further back, a little further back, and we're all hopeful that it's coming sooner and later, and we've been told that, but at the same time, it's the state, and they can do what they want. Um, I just look at it from all the people that have to deal with that intersection every day, they have to deal with that waiting time until the state gets around to doing it. And I feel like maybe the developer should, should feel some of that and wait. And then maybe hopefully you or other developers that have impact on that intersection in the area can apply some influence to the state to maybe increase the speed of that project. It just to me, and, and I think the future rating on that traffic study too was moving them to it was it was significant it was going from like worst case i think at peak hours it was a 76 second wait and after in 2026 i, I think it said it's going to be like 175 second wait which is a significant increase which clearly is well beyond e or whatever the worst rating is um and then and again all hypothetical but you know longer waits mean more impatient drivers which mean more bad decisions and then i'm just wondering at what point are we sitting up here with a room full of people who are furious because something tragic has taken place at that intersection? It's because we're worried about the state's going to handle it, and that's all we're doing. So I don't know how everyone else feels about it. I don't know what we can do about that as a city or as a planning commission. It's just um, 
something I would like to, to talk about at least or think about. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Madam Mayor. After meeting with TDOT, um, this uh, intersection is going to start construction May of this coming year. And they're already... Mayor. Uh, Mayor. Yes. They will be letting the project out for bid in May of okay. 2025. It starts it will, May. Of it will likely start about 12 months after that. Okay. It start well, that's... Okay, I was misinformed by um, a member of TDOT from our, my GNRC meeting then because they said maybe their meaning begin May of 2025 is the beginning of the process. But I just wanted to put it out there that, you know, this isn't their 10-year plan. This is May of 2025. They're already doing surveying out there right now. And just to reiterate, just so we're all on the same page, that traffic study was showing the conditions of that intersection in 2026 and what it will be with all of the, everything that they took into consideration for that study. So I think even if they started the bid process in May, you're still looking at well beyond 2026 before that's, you know, a finished project. Is that accurate? Or at least sometime late 26, probably. Commissioner McDonald, the, from what I've been communicated, uh, the project will go out for bid in May of 2025. Uh, they will award that project roughly July to August of 2025. There will be an approximate six month mobilization time prior to construction actually beginning and us as citizens seeing equipment moving out. And then it'll take about 18 months. So it should, if everything goes according to plan, according to TDOT's plan currently, uh, it would be late summer, early fall of 2027 prior at the time of completion of the project. And for clarification, what is the estimated construction timeline to implement phase four? So assuming we get um, development plan approval tonight, we'll still have to go through the construction plan approval process as well as the state permitting process for um, both grading plans as well as public utilities. Um, that approval process is probably looking at about six months. And then beyond that, we'll, we'll be looking to start breaking ground. Okay. It's probably fair to say that we w might see some residential construction um, early first half 2026 with final completion within 12 16 18 months i think that perhaps. would be fair yes sir just yes and something i'll note too about you know tdot plans as well is um you know even when we submit private um improvement plans for um various tdot intersections and things like that um sometimes those plans even aren't are in take 12 months to approve and to review by the time you get surveying and everything. So unfortunately, when you work with TDOT, things are just a little bit longer, um, kind of all around. As a technical clarification, I'll just add, we had a discussion, I had a discussion with engineering concerning lot number 18, that is the property that's uh, at the northern east corner of the cul-de-sac. Yes, sir. My initial question was, does the frontage meet the 100 feet? I think based on our interpretation definition, it does. And I, I understand that now, but I just wanted to clarify that for the rest of the Planning Commission. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, discussion? All right, we will now vote on uh, on PC resolution 25-24, along with the um, conditions of approval as stated previously. Ms. Bruce, would you please call the vote? Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Ms. Schilling? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Ms. Schulist? Aye. Mr. McDonald? No. Mr. Pape? Aye. And Mr. King? Aye. Motion carries eight to one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, item number four, PC resolution, PC 26-24, final plat reserves on Chester phase one. This is a 22.96 acres, map 42 parcels, 136.02 property. Current zoning is RS 40, property owner 
Duke and Duke LLC. Mr. Greer, will you please read your staff report? The reserves on Chester subdivision phase one. Uh, the application has been a final plat submitted by T squared engineering engineer uh, Lewis Sloyan. The reserves on Chester residential subdivision consist of two phases and a total of 46 single family residential lots. The entire property is zoned RS 40 single family residential district. Phase one of the development contains 15 single family residential lots on 22.96 acres. Additionally, phase one will create two new public rights of way named Severide Street and Florham Court. The Veeride Street will provide access onto Chester Road and Florham Court will be extended into future phases of the de development. Both rights of way will have a 62 foot right of way width to better accommodate emergency response vehicles, primarily fire trucks. Also, phase one will create five open spaces totaling 4.62 acres. Open space one, two, and five will contain stormwater detention ponds, while open space six will contain the cluster mailbox unit for the subdivision. Finally, a 0.16 acre lot will be created at the northeast corner of the property to provide a location for a sewer pump station. Our staff recommendation uh, is the Planning Commission to approve the final plat for phase one of the reserves on Chester residential subdivision in order to create 15 single family residential lots, two new public rights of way, create a parcel for locating a pump station, create five open spaces and install all necessary infrastructure as resubmitted on June 20th, 2024. Thank you, Mr. Greer. Do I hear a motion for PC 2624? Motion to approve. Mayor Anderson. Second. Ms. Shulist. Do we have any representatives tonight from this application? Sir, if you'll please state your name and address for the record. Yes, I'm Lewis Sloyan. I'm with T-Square Engineering. Again, at 111 Southeast Parkway. Thank you, sir. And we'll uh, open it now up for discussion questions from the board and any clarifications here from the applicant. Or, sir, if you wish to start out, is there any additional clarifications to? I don't believe there's any further clarifications. These first 15 lots are in line with the original uh, construction plans that were approved, and we're uh, just looking to get started and get those underway. I'll start out with one question. It, it's uh, kind of relative to the cell tower that's uh, on lot six. Uh, this kind of has a conditional approval and uh, perhaps this might be more of a question for city engineering planning. Uh, do we have any restrictions with an, an object of that height within close proximity of residential properties that, that you can think of? I couldn't find any, I just wanted to verify. I, I can speak to that a little bit, actually. There's a dashed circle represented on lot five. That's the approximate height of the cell tower. So if it were to fall, it would fall within that That's circle, the fall that, zone. That dashed circle. So we tried to keep that outside of any lot or any habitable structure. So it, we feel that's an appropriate setback for all those. Will there be any kind of barrier or fence around it? I believe probably the existing fence that the cell tower currently has will remain and just the access drive will change to follow the public road and then a short driveway sure. up to it. And it's not, it'll be managed by a third party, that cell tower lot? Uh, yes, whoever, whoever is a current leasee will still. Gotcha. I had one additional question for you. Lots 40 and 41, which on the screen um, are seg kind of segmented with a utility easement that's about, I don't know, two thirds down. Does that easement impact the available building area of those lots? I, I know the gross area of those was significant, but is the net area applicable to? There is plenty of area to build a 
quite a substantial house still. Um, the, the lot slopes from the road downhill to the southwest um, and it's very heavily wooded. So it, we anticipate the houses to be closer to the street just to, um, for buildability purposes. So I, I don't believe that should impact the house or any structure. Okay, thank you. Any additional thoughts, questions, discussion by the Planning Commission? All right, thanks, sir. We'll complete the, tonight's discussion. Ms. Bruce, will you please call for the vote on PC 2624? Mayor Anderson? Aye. Ms. Shulist? Aye. Ms. Shilley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Mr. McDonald? Aye. Mr. Cowley? Aye. Mr. Pape? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Motion carries 9-0. Next item on the agenda tonight is uh, item number five, PC resolution PC 24 dash, or excuse me, 27 dash 24, commercial site plan Sherwin-Williams. This property is 2.0 acres, map 47 parcels, 2.03. Current zoning is commercial general property owner capstone partners we will first call for any motion on pc 27-24 make a motion to approve pc 27-24 mr cowley second miss williams mr greer will you please read the staff report chase kerr with crunk engineering has submitted on behalf of capstone partners a site development plan for Sherwin Williams in order to construct a commercial building located at 2310 Fairview Boulevard. The property is located on the west side of Fairview Boulevard, Highway 100, and directly north of the existing tractor supply store. The property is zoned commercial general and contains 2.08 acres in size and has frontage along Fairview Boulevard. No portion of the property is located within a flood hazard area. The proposed commercial building is 4,964 square feet in size, along with required parking, trash enclosure, storm infrastructure, and all other necessary utility infrastructure. The existing access for tractor supply crosses this property and will remain as part of this project. The proposed Sherwin-Williams access point will connect to the existing access for tractor supply. The surrounding uh, land use, the two properties to the north are zoned RS40, single family residential and commercial general. The properties to the south and east are zoned commercial general. The properties to the west are zoned AR15A agricultural and RS40, single family residential. The properties to the north contain commercial uses as well, the city of Fairview Planning and Codes Department and Public Works Building. Property to the south contains the existing tractor supply store. The properties to the east across Fairview Boulevard are vacant and part of a condominium development. Finally, to the west, one property is currently vacant while the other property is part of Bowie Nature Park. The Fairview Forward 2040 Comprehensive Plan designates this property as commercial corridor. All properties to the north, south, and east across Fairview Boulevard are also designated as commercial corridor. The properties to the west are designated as civic and natural open space. The commercial corridor classification notes the appropriate land use are retail, restaurant, office, light industrial, and civic institutional. And the commercial corridor classification notes the commercial general zone district as an appropriate zone district within this classification. The existing property is currently zoned commercial general. The applicant is requesting for a few exceptions for this project. The first request is to receive an exception from section 4.113.205 of the Fairview subdivision regulations in order to permit the use of an above ground stormwater detention pond. The second request is seeking an exception from section 8.103.7 of the Fairview zoning ordinance in order to not install sidewalks along Fairview Boulevard, Highway 100 due to existing stormwater drainage pond directly adjacent to Fairview Boulevard. In lieu of installation of the sidewalk, the owner will make a contribution to the city sidewalk fund. Staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the Sherwin-Williams site 
development plan in order to construct a 4,964 square foot commercial building along with required parking, stormwater infrastructure and landscaping as resubmitted on June 25th, 2024 with the following conditions of approval included in the resolution. Uh, a condition, an exception to allow above ground stormwater detention, exception to allow payment in lieu of constructing required sidewalk, and an exception to allow less than 70% brick on exterior elevations. Thank you, Mr. Greer. Do we have a representative from tonight's applicant? Could you please state your name and address? Hello, uh, Chase Kerr with Crunk Engineering, uh, 7112 Crossroads Boulevard. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Chair. Mayor Anderson. I'm excited to see that um, my idea of flipping the building uh, got approved. I think that's a much better plan and I think um, it works really well that way. Also, um, I'm in favor of the uh, detention pond exception because it cannot be uh, seen at all from the road. Just to clarify, the detention pond has moved from the previous location. So it is now more visible than it was before. Okay. That's all. Thank you, Mayor. Other comments, questions? I'll start with one question. There were several other additional comments that I don't think was quite addressed in the city's review, such as a monument sign. Do we have an update or know when that's going to be submitted? Uh, I'm not 100% sure on when that's going to be submitted. I can get with the architecture uh, company and confirm on uh, what the plan is for the monument sign submittal. But as of right now, I'm not 100% sure on when that will be submitted. Okay. And my second question is, is there a reason why we had we were not meeting the 70% masonry and EFIS tractor supply easily meets that with their uh, split face, I believe? I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to get with the architecture firm as well on that okay. comment. For such a high visible project, I, I think it really should should comply, in my personal opinion. Ms. Shulis. There's quite a lot of comments from staff. Do you feel, does the developer feel like they would comply with the outstanding questions or comments or tasks that they are asking? Uh, yes, we would meet all of the city staff comments that are, um, we would address all of them. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Shulis, just to speak to the open comments, uh, one, two, three of these comments are from fire and life safety. Fire hydrant must be within 100 uh, feet of the fire department connection. The building footprint originally submitted was greater than 5,000 square feet. Uh, dropping that below 5,000 square feet took those requirements away. The building does not have to be sprinkled because it is less than 5,000 square feet. And so the requirements from fire and life safety that were noted in the staff comments uh, become mute at that point. Uh, one of the comments was from our city engineer uh, for future for us to help go back and look whenever we're doing our construction plan review. And then there were two comments from our um, city planning consultant with provide percentages for each material on each elevation, which I believe Mr. Magner spoke to tonight, and then the signage as well. How do we reconcile if we approve it with conditions that some of these conditions are not applicable anymore? Do we have to amend the approval to be conditions only for 5,000 square feet or less? Help me understand your question. What is so? There's 27 open items, but three of those are not applicable anymore. Could, 27, you said. Yes. Well, we're currently showing seven on IET. Um, okay. You don't mind to make, I guess, clarify maybe what project number you might be looking at. Version um, one. Either way, if there's three items that are no longer applicable, 
do we need to amend the approval based on staff comments to not include those three items? Within the resolution, there's not a condition of approval to address staff comments. Uh, the only conditions that were listed in the resolution are the exceptions for the above ground stormwater detention, the less than 70% brick requirement on the exterior of the building, and then the payment in lieu of the side required sidewalk along Highway 100. So if you were to vote yes, you currently have a motion to approve. So if you were to vote yes, you would be voting and including the existing conditions of approval that are on here. If you would like to amend this and add a condition of approval or amend and remove a condition of approval that is currently on the resolution, you may do so. Okay, I understand. I get it now. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cowley. <clears throat> So uh, less than 70% brick, like Mr. Magner said, what's the percentage gonna be then? I mean, they could be 20%? Can we, can we advance back to the front elevation, please? It might have been, yes, sir. thank you. Mr. Kelly, that was the comment that was asked for by our planning consultant for please provide percentages of uh, building materials. Those were not explicitly provided. The masonry that is on there currently shows a stone and ephus as the secondary material. Brick has a zero percentage amount on this project. And so they would be asking for zero brick, but the exception would be for the less than 70% requirement. And for clarification here, the top elevation, that is actually facing, I guess it'd be west towards Tractor Supply, is that correct? Yes, sir. The lower elevation is what faces Fair Fairview Boulevard at an angle? That's correct. Mr. Chairman, uh, just so Ethan, just so I'm understanding, um, the requirements for brick, but they're providing stone, so there is some stone in lieu of brick, but we don't know the percentage of stone um, compared to, to the EFIS. So, you know, my mind is, yeah, the stone is just as good as brick, but we don't know the percentage. It's still probably going to be below 70. Our design review manual states that it shall be 70% brick accented by stone and other masonry products. So it specifically says 70% brick. The stone does not count as any percentage towards the brick percentage. Just if we were looking at it and saying we we're going to grant this variance because the stone is a good replacement for brick, we just still don't know the percentage comparison is, is the only challenge. That's correct. Okay. Mr. Magner. <clears throat> Mr. McDonald. Uh, Mr. Greer, were they, when they requested the variance, there was no additional information provided as to why that variance was needing to be requested? They just simply, they just didn't want to meet it? I don't know if the applicant has the answer to that either. I, it sounds like your architectural team probably is handling that side of things. Uh, yes, sir, that's correct. I guess in my mind, if there wasn't a reason given, it seems more of like a wish list item. Um, and personally, I think we should amend it to remove that request and allow them and require them to retain the 70% brick. Right, I'm curious if anyone else has thoughts, I'm happy to make the amendment if it's needed. Mr. McDonald, I made the comment, so I'll just, just clarity. clarity. Um, that was a comment that I made after reviewing the resubmittal, and my comment was provide the exact percentages of the stone uh, to meet, and I don't remember the exact section of the design review manual, uh, and then I said, or a variance can be requested. So uh, from the time of resubmittal and to now, there's just not been an updated elevations provided, and they just chose to make the request for the variance. 
So, so I, I did ask for the percentages and then also just let them know that there was the option if they wanted to choose the variance and that's what they've requested. So. Thank you. I, I mean, to give additional feedback, I agree. I mean, either we remove the exception number three about the 70% brick or potentially, you know, defer for 30 days and let them come back with it and give us more reason to have the architect come and give us reason and ex explanation on why it seems to make sense to me. I would agree. I think it'd be interesting to know if it's like a design from a corporate level that they just have a specific look that they have to meet. If that's what's, it's not their decision, it's someone above them or, you know, I, and, and having the percentages of exactly what it's going to end up looking like too, I think was probably something we should know before we say go for it. Just for conversation, uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't write your name down. My apologies. Um, is a 30-day deferral something that would work for you? Is that enough time for you all to get that information as far as the percentages of the exterior of the building and all of that? Would, would 30 days be adequate? Uh, yes, sir. I believe that that would be plenty of time. Yeah. We would love to get it approved at any capacity today if that's possible, but understand if you'd like to defer 30 days. Thank you. So just for clarification, if that's the case, we just not saying that we are, but we will have to postpone tonight's hit reading on this particular motion, and you'd have to bring it back again to the next planning commission it, if that's if that's the decision. Otherwise, we have to make a decision on the variance request. That's understood. So, so which one would you would you rather us defer it for thirty days or? do away with the um, not complying with the 70%? I don't believe the a formal variance request has been requested for the exception um, for the 70% brick requirement. So if uh, making an amendment to only look at items or exception one and two uh, would be, I think that would be preferred today. And then if I don't think we could break it apart. Uh, what, what would probably happen is we would not approve the variance and require the application to finish your submission with the city to follow the 70% brick requirement. Um, and then everything else would follow whatever, however the rest of the motion would carry. But you know, we can't separate only out that one particular variance for tonight. I understand. I thought uh, I misunderstood the conversation then. Mr. Chair. Um, Mayor. Can we not, can we not um, uh, can we not separate the variances yeah, out? Can we not just, just um, Mr. Hogan, yeah. you have clarification. Uh, yes, so you could amend the motion to remove condition number three and exception to the 70% brick uh, and then if the plan is approved, then they'll, yeah, be, so just they'll the have to build it in accordance with the code. That. Yeah, they would, they would just have to build and it in accordance with the code. What you're, what, that's what yes, you're... Yes, ma'am, that's what I was... Okay. Uh, okay. Just, that's what I thought that we so could So we do. can make a motion to approve removing the 70% uh, brick. Yes, Mayor. I, I would recommend a secondary motion to amend this motion by striking exception number three. Agreed. That way we can continue any additional conversations right. on and then, the others. And then vote on the amendment and then uh, continue with the main motion. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. I, I concur with that approach. Okay, we... so I make a motion to approve with... Um... I'm sorry, Mayor. Uh, it, it's amend the motion by amend. removing yes. the 70% <laughs> by... brick requirement. Thank you. Thank you. What he said. <laughs> Mayor second. Anderson, do we have a second? Second. Uh, Mr. McDonald. Ms. Bruce, would you call a vote on the amendment to the motion? Thank you. Mayor Anderson. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Aye. Ms. Schilling. Ms. Williams. Mr. Magner. Aye. Ms. Shulist. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Pape. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. So the amendment to the motion carries 9-0. So we have removed that item. So as it stands, you know, the project moving forward will have to comply with the 70% brick requirement. Uh, 
That's understood. Now back to the original discussion, we still have two additional variances on the table. That is the above ground stormwater detention and we have the uh, sidewalk um, uh, exclusion with the sidewalk funding source uh, for conversation. I have additional question for you as well, if you don't mind. Um, to the north, plan north here of their property, we, we abut a property that's zoned RS40. Uh, I don't really see a lot of screening and that elevation of, of, the, of the building is you know fairly, you know, it's, it, it's lacking architectural detail. Um, I'm not, I, I could not find a specific requirement for a landscape screening of a, of a commercial property this close to the property line. Per the Planning Commission, I'd like to see some screening here to protect any neighbor uh, that might be close by. Mr. Chair. Mayor Anderson. Um, Ethan, um, how is the screening done behind Tractor Supply? Well, it's uh, currently, it's hard to tell. It's heavily vegetated back there now, mm -hmm. right up to the property line. Um, see, that's RS-40. Tets Agricultural, this one here is RS-40 as it stands. Apologies, our laptops are running quite slow today. We're trying to pull up the landscape plan to see what was proposed. So we would sit. So would they not have the same wooded area behind them? Keith, Keith, can you utilize ClickShare to show my screen? It would be this. It would be this property line right here. I mean, currently that is naturally shaded. Which one are you talking about? So it, see this building is going to sit right here. Mm -hmm. And so this property line, they're only sitting 15 feet. So are we talking about where we back up to all of the, no, all of the codes, um, buildings? Oh, yes, it would be. Yeah. So what, what <laughs> they would probably want to screen it for themselves <laughs> because actually what they're looking onto from the elevation you're speaking of is all of the, every, all the equipment and everything that we park for codes. Okay. The codes There currently is a fenced, fence line there that has uh, matured trees along that yeah. fence line. Okay, so we already have a natural screen. I have provided their landscape plan that's on the, the screen before you that shows uh, landscaping between their building and tractor supply around their uh, dumpster area and then within their parking lot. Plan north here uh, would actually be where my office sits and uh, the fire department both sit plan north of this property. So they, uh, there's currently a pretty good screen there from our offices and then they will be retaining quite a bit of that. Yes, sir, none of the existing mature trees will be uh, demolished with this construction. All right, thank you. Any additional comments, questions on the uh, stormwater and the sidewalk? As it stands, the current retention out along Fairview Boulevard, that falls within this lot, correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. And don't we also have a tree requirement every 30 feet along Fairview Boulevard that technically would fall under requirement with this submission? That is uh, within the TDOT right of way, and it is currently a detention area. It drops off significantly from the edge of pavement uh, into that drainage area. 
that collects all of uh, tractor supply there along with several other businesses across. It actually has a culvert, I believe, that goes under Highway 100 at that point and then out um, across the street. And so there's practically no available space there for trees or a sidewalk. Um, within the TDOT plans of, of Fairview, there is a sidewalk proposed on the north side of Highway 100 going along there. Um, and so with that, I think it would be in the best interest of the city to require this developer to pay an in lieu of fee uh, for sidewalks since that is currently within the TDOT project. And we can utilize those funds elsewhere in the community to connect existing sidewalk infrastructure and to place new sidewalk infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. Greer. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Williams. Just referring back to your statement, sir, are those funds discretionary to the builder or is there a formula that's allocated for how much they <coughs> donate or provide the city? They submit their opinion of probable cost of what it would cost to install the sidewalk, and then I approve those numbers, and more often than not, they're changed uh, using you know today's unit prices and also identifying anything they may have missed. So they're they're approved by engineering staff. It's it, it's not just an accepted value. Further questions, discussion from the board. Ms. Bruce, will you please uh, call a vote on PC 2724? Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Ms. Schilling? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Ms. Shulist? Aye. Mr. McDonald? Aye. Mr. Pape? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Motion carries 9 0. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Next item on the agenda, item number six. PC resolution PC 28-24, rezoning Cumberland Fairview, 5.6 acres, map 46, parcels 108.05. Current zoning is RS40, proposed zoning CMU, property owner S&W Partners. May I hear a motion um, to? Make a motion to approve PC 28-24. Mr. Kelly. Second. And who is the second? Mr. Pate. Mr. Greer, would you please read your staff report? Mr. Adam Sager with Dell and Associates has submitted on behalf of S&W Fairview Partners a request to rezone the entire 5.6 acre parcel located at the southeast corner of the Fairview, of Fairview Boulevard and Cumberland Drive. The property is currently zoned RS40 single family residential and the requested zone district is commercial mixed use. The properties to the north, south and east are zoned RS40 single family residential and the properties to the west are zoned R20 one and two family residential. The properties to the north, south and east are zoned RS40 single family residential. Properties to the north, south, and west contain single-family detached residences, residences, and the property to the east contains a church. Although not directly adjacent to the subject property, additional properties to the south and east contain Fairview Middle School, Fairview High School, and Fairview Elementary on the other side of Highway 100. Fairview Forward 2040 Comprehensive Plan designates this property as Transition Corridor. The transition corridor notes appropriate land use are single family detached office and civic institutional. The transition corridor classification lists two zone districts as appropriate zoning and those zone districts are RS40 and a new district that would permit the adaptive reuse of existing structures and new development with a residential form. A new zone district focused on adaptive adaptivity, reusing existing buildings or requiring new development to have a residential form has not been adopted at this time. Therefore, the only appropriate zone district available is RS40, which is the current zoning of the property. The primary conflict presented by having only one zone district noted as appropriate is that the listed appropriate land uses of office and civic institutional are not permitted within RS40. 
given the location of the property at the intersection of two primary roadways and the upcoming intersection improvements adjacent to this property, which will include signalization, the applicant feels the property is well suited for commercial development. Staff investigated the other future land use categories in the general area to determine how the Fairview Forward 2040 designates other properties along Fairview Boulevard located at intersections. The next intersection to the north, Glenhaven Drive, and the next three intersections to the south, Old Franklin Road, King Road, and Westview Boulevard um, along Highway 100 are each surrounded by properties designated as commercial center. Although only a few of the properties contain commercial uses or are zoned commercially, it appears the 2040 plan envisioned commercial uses along smaller intersections along Fairview Boulevard based on the classification of commercial center surrounding all directly adjacent intersections. Given the classifying of these many parcels as commercial center and not the intersection of Fairview Boulevard and Cumberland Drive seems inconsistent. Additionally, the intersection of Fairview and Cumberland will be better suited to handle traffic due to the proposed roadway improvements that will occur as part of the ongoing TDOT project along Fairview Boulevard. Given the location of the property at a major intersection that will be updated as part of a TDOT project that includes signalization, the ability of the intersection to handle commercial traffic, and the pattern of classifying other properties at nearby, intersection as, at nearby intersections as commercial center, Staff recommends the Planning Commission provide a favorable recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. The reason for their proposed rezoning, the applicant provided the following project description as the basis for the rezoning. It is a good location for a commercial zoning being on the corner of a parcel on the main road through Fairview. It is surrounded by a church and a school and other, parcel, other similar parcels in Fairview. They are zoned commercial. Our staff recommends uh, the Planning Commission provide a favorable, favorable recommendation to the Board of Commissioners to approve this request to rezone the 5.6 acre parcel at the southeast corner of Fairview Boulevard and Cumberland Drive from the current zoning of RS40 to commercial mixed use with the following conditions of approval. This rezoning request will be placed on the Thursday, August 1st Board of Commissioners meeting for consideration with the potential for the public hearing and second reading being held at the Thursday, September 5th, 2024 Board of Commissioners meeting. Thank you, Mr. Greer. Do we have a representative tonight for this application? Would you please state your name and address? Uh, Hunter Dale, address is 516 Heather Place, Nashville, Tennessee, 37211. Thank you, Mr. Dale. As a, a reminder, as we start the discussion, this is a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners uh, that we're voting on tonight. Um, any initial thoughts, uh, comments from the applicant? I mean, Ethan, thank you. You did a great job in kind of what we had discussed. You know, the only thing that we had kind of talked about, um, the reason we had recommended commercial mixed use was just because right now this is, is just a vision. Uh, the existing zoning and commercial are very specific. I think there's like five or six uses in each category. So the commercial mixed use just allows more room to kind of dream about what it could be. You know, it's five acres, so it could be different vendors. And one of those categories may allow retail and the other category may allow restaurant, but some of those didn't allow both, right? So that was why we recommended commercial mixed use. Um, so. Thank you. We'll open up for discussion. From planning Move Commission. for approval. Mayor Anderson. Uh, we we have a motion on already already sorry I'm yes so sorry. Mr. Kelly well good Ms. I'm excited about Mr. that Kate. I apologize <laughs> I fell right in line with that too <laughs> I'll start with one comment that, you know initially I uh, kind of examined this pretty heavily um, because it, it, you would think whatever applies to this particular corner may or may not apply to all four corners but really when you look at um, what's happening there with the school and the church uh, it does kind of take on a, a commercial feel on this right. particular corner I don't know that that should necessarily be a blanket statement for all four corners of the intersection but it does have some some bearing that's my personal thought and comment to that so Mr. Pay. sorry I couldn't get that turned on um, yeah I, I'm always a big proponent of following the the future land use plan, um, the Fairview Forward plan. In this case, I was surprised to see what it was. I, I think 
you know, we always have to relook at things. And with where things have gone, I, I think we may have gotten it wrong in the Fairview Forward plan here. Uh, you know, I've, you've heard, you guys have heard me talk before that, you know, we as we continue to grow, we want good retail, we want good um, restaurants and things of that nature. And those types of businesses want to land at an intersection with a traffic signal. Now, obviously, that traffic signal is critical. I wouldn't want to put a commercial use there until that traffic signal is there. And I think we can control through that through development plan processes, et cetera. But I, I actually think this is a great location and, and zoning it. Um, for commercial mixed use gives the opportunity to attract the good restaurants and retail that we want as we continue to grow. Other thoughts, comments from the Planning Commission? Uh, Mr. Chair, yeah. I have to Please. agree with, uh, with Member Pate. I mean, he's absolutely correct. Uh, a commercial area will be significant for Fairview, but that traffic signal is going to be paramount. It's going to be imperative. Just curious from the engineering department, do we happen to have any updates? Sorry, this really doesn't impact no, as much, good. but do we happen to know, is there a current updated schedule on the intersection? Expected completion of that signalized interchange is late summer, early fall of 2027. Thank you, sir. Other discussions, questions? Right. You, you said this was a vision um, and I'm not a huge fan of blanket zoning on something where we sure. we're not really sure what's going to go there because the developer could walk away, right. somebody else could come in and totally botch it. Um, is there a few concepts that are being floated? Uh, Mr. Wright's here. I know you can speak into that more, but essentially nothing specific. You know, the CMU isn't broad enough to where it can just be anything right it is very still specific in that retail restaurant feel i think um child care is there and maybe there's some conditions for automotive but it's really restrictive in those kind of things so uh, and you guys ethan you may be able to speak into that more than me on what uses are allowed in that but when i was looking through it it didn't feel like the range was so wide where it would be just like a it's going to be very similar it feels like regardless of what it turns into just in my opinion but as far as specifics, no. Um, there's no specific vendor or anything like that that has been committed to. Ms. Shoes, if you'd like, we can read off the uses within CMU, but if you, let us know. No, I mean, I, I can read it. I just wanted to see if there was any, like, narrow, if you had narrowed down on anything more specific. Not, again, no, and just because from a design perspective, Entitlement is usually the first piece versus instead of going down the rabbit hole, figuring out what actually works. So kind of getting it zoned to commercial would be the first step in exploring options in more detail. Mr. Chair. Mayor Anderson. Myself, um, we are very lacking in child development and daycare situations. So um, I think this would be a great opportunity with all the schools around to do something like that, just a suggestion, and maybe some type of a re some type of retail that um, possibly people dropping off could take advantage of coffee shop, smoothie shop, breakfast, something that they drop their kids off, they get that, they head to work. So, um, with the lack of, you know, with all the children we have and the lack of daycare, child development. I think that's a, a perfect spot for something like that. That's all. Any additional comments, questions? Ms. Bruce, will you please, uh, thank you, sir, call the vote on PC 28-24. Mr. Cowie? Aye. Mr. Pape? Aye. Ms. Schilling? Ms. Williams? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Ms. Shulist? Aye. Mr. McDonald? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Motion carries 9-0. Next item on the agenda, item number seven, PC resolution PC 29-24, rezoning and master development plan, Bark East Fairview. This is a 37.52 acres, map 46, parcels 87. Current zoning, CG proposed zoning, 
RM8 pod and RS10 pod property owner Bark East LLC. Uh, do we first hear a, a motion to discuss PC 2924? I'd make a motion that we defer this for 30 days to gather more information. We have a motion to defer on the table. Do we have a second for that? Second. Mr. Chairman, I'd be glad to explain why I made the motion to defer um, real quick before we get into any of the presentations. I think it's still a good time to have some discussion over it. Um, the first thing is I just don't think the application's complete. One of the things our code requires for a pod is a variance or deviations list, and that wasn't submitted, and I think there are some. Um, and I think that's important as planning commission members that we know exactly what variations to the underlying codes are, are there before we act. So I think that's part of it. I also think I, I also have comments to the plan that I think are significant enough that I'd love to see changed. And rather than potentially denying the application tonight, I'd love to talk to them about that and, and give some comments in, in the hopes that we can get something that is more palatable moving forward. That's that's why I made that motion. Could we do a work session before the planning commission meeting next month? We can always call for a work session. Uh, the question we could. Uh, this applicant had a work session about, I think, two months ago uh, with this same similar plan, uh, and they made a few changes to that and then submitted it uh, based on the information that was provided to them at that point by this planning commission uh, with the addition of, um, without the addition of Mr. King. Um, and so I think the applicant would love to hear any questions and uh, and provide any answers that you have tonight so as a point of order here if if um if we vote on a motion to defer we can't have that discussion in an open forum so at, at, just as a statement to the planning point, commission point of order though you, you the motion in a second is on the table and now discussion is open before you call for the vote okay right i believe i believe that's correct yeah. okay you can, thank you, you can discuss the motion to defer. Yes, thank you. And I guess those would be part of the reasons. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. That said, Mr. Pape, uh, would you please state um, for this forum that comment, and then we will ask, uh, well, first, before I do that, we have a member here representing the application, correct? Could you please state your name and address for the record? Yes, good evening. I'm Josh Rowland with Kimley Horn. Um, we're here representing the applicant tonight, and I just wanted to say that we did get an email from Commissioner Pape today with uh, outlining some of his questions, and we're very ready to answer those. I, I would love the opportunity to kind of go over what we talked about in our work session and what we've been doing with uh, staff and other um, you know, members of, of the commission in some of our early meetings. So I think, I think we're in a great place tonight to move this project forward. And, and I think we've got some, some pretty good answers for um, Commissioner Pape and others if um, given the opportunity. Mr. Pape. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to hearing what they have to say and, and I'm glad to give my additional comments after that. Ethan, did you want to start or do you want me to start? Uh, yeah, we still need to hear the staff report, okay. Mr. Ethan. Kimley Horn has submitted on behalf of Bark East LLC a request to rezone a 37.52 acre portion of tax map 46, parcel 87, from commercial general to RM8 pod, planned overlay development, and RS10 pod, planned overlay development, and approve a master development plan for the Bark East Fairview project. The Planning Commission's role uh, tonight is to provide a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, if this item is deferred at the next meeting, you would provide your recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. The property is located at 2451 Fairview Boulevard, Highway 100, which is east of Fairview Boulevard, north of Cumberland Drive and south of Glen Haven Drive. The property contains a total of 50.63 acres and is currently zoned commercial general. The rezoning request is for 37.52. Keith, if you'll go to the next slide, please. 
37.52 acres of the parcel, which are located in the middle and then along the back perimeter. The front along Highway 100 would remain would remain commercial. So the rezoning request would be for RM8 along the middle piece and RS10 pod along the perimeter. The proposed planned overlay district development consists of 237 residential total units consisting of 42 single family detached uh, residential units, 123 townhomes with front loading garages and 72 townhomes with surface parking. The 42 single family residential units are proposed within the requested RS10 pod zone district and the 195 townhome units are proposed within the requested RM8 pod zone district. The requested rezoning will leave 10.52 acres that will maintain the existing zoning of commercial general and remain in the possession of the current owner for development in the future. The development will be protecting several stream and wetlands several streams and wetlands on site with long linear green spaces that stretch from the northern boundary to the southern boundary of the property. Additionally, the required 20 foot buffer yard is proposed along the northern, southern and eastern boundaries of the property in order to buffer against the existing single family residences adjacent to the property. In regards to the required open space, the RM10 pod portion of the development 12.51 acres is required to provide 10% of the property or 1.2 acres in open space with 50% of the open space being improved. As proposed, the RM RS10 pod portion is providing a total of 3.8 acres of open space and the 0.6 acres of improved open space Within the RM8 pod portion of the development, 25.01 acres, 10%, 2.5 acres are required with 50% or 1.25 acres of improved open space. As proposed, the RM8 pod portion is providing 11.1 .1 acres of open space and 1.39 acres of improved open space. The proposed improved open spaces include a clubhouse and pool, a playground with seating areas, walking trails, a second playground area, and a community garden and pavilion area. The properties to the north and east are zoned R20, one and two family residential, and the properties to the west across Fairview Boulevard and south are zoned RS40, single family residential. The Fairview Forward 2040 Comprehensive Plan classifies the western portion of the property along Fairview Boulevard as commercial corridor that notes commercial general as an appropriate zone district. The remaining portion of the property, uh, the back half, the plan east and back, um, is designated as a transition neighborhood in the 2040 plan. That notes RS15, uh, which is 15,000 square foot lots, RS8, which is 8,000 single family square foot lots, RS5, 5,000 square foot single family lots, RM8 with a PUD as appropriate zone districts. The portion of the property designated as commercial corridor is currently zoned commercial general and will retain that zoning. Also, the portion designated as commercial corridor is not part of the requested pod development, but will remain and be developed by the current owner. The portion of the property that is requested to be within the pod development is found within the area classified as residential transition. The requested zoning for the pod is RS10 pod and RM8 pod. The RM8 zone district with a pod is listed as an appropriate zoning the RS10 zone district with a pod is not listed as an appropriate zoning. However, more intense, more dense zone districts, RS8 and RS5 are listed as appropriate zone districts. So the RS10 zoning with a PUD will produce similar or less intense development than the appropriate zone districts of RS8 and RS5. Also, the proposed land uses of single family detached residential and townhomes are both listed as appropriate land uses within the residential transition neighborhood classification. 
the requested rezoning to RS10 pod and RM8 pod and the stated land uses are in alignment with the Fairview Forward 2040 plan. Staff recommends the Planning Commission provide a favorable recommendation to the Fairview Board of Commissioners to approve this request to rezone 12.51 acres from Commercial General to RS10 pod and 25.01 acres from Commercial General to RM8 pod and approve the master development plan for Bark East Fairview development as resubmitted on June 25th, 2024 with the following conditions of approval included in the resolution PC 2924. The rezoning request will be placed on the Thursday, August 1st, 2024 Board of Commissioners meeting agenda for consideration with the potential for the public hearing and second reading being held at the Thursday, September 5th, 2024 Board of Commissioners meeting. Thank you, Mr. Greer. Mr. Pape, would you uh, initiate some of your initial concerns? Sure. Um, the one thing I stated was just that there wasn't that list of deviations listed, and I think there are some of those. One of the things that I, that I think uh, my biggest concern with the plan, and first of all, let me say, guys, I do appreciate you guys listening. You came back with a pod, so you guys listened to some of what we said. I just don't think you heard it all. You know, I went back and looked at the, the notes from the um, – from the work session and uh, Ms. Sinyard specifically said in the back she would struggle to support anything smaller than R15 with, with the single family part and I agreed with that. Um, you know we have R20 surrounding it and some R40 and I think the lots need to be bigger and the, the concern I have is that the RS10 gets a little bit or the yeah the RS10 gets a little bit deceiving with a pod you know they can go to 50 percent of that so the minimum lot size is 5,000 lots and all those lots are literally six to eight thousand square feet back there so significantly smaller than the rs20 what i'd like to see is is everything behind that wetland essentially everything east of that wetland be single family you get rid of that one row of townhomes you expand those lots and make them closer to r15 um, and, and and expand those those lot sizes i think that's the biggest issue that i have with it and uh, along with I just think it's really important that with pods we require a list of variances and and that to the to the um, to the plans um, another question I had was kind of when we do some of the relative to pods when we do some of the review stuff there's a lot of mature trees in the back of that and obviously our design standards have a requirement for tree plants or um, existing trees and tree save requirements and i know that's usually handled later but i also know that we have a plan in front of us that has grading basically right to the property lines and I don't want you guys as the applicant to think, oh, we're great with these lot layouts and everything. And then you come back later with a tree plan and we say, I'm sorry, we want to save these trees and it's going to affect your layout. And, and so I understand that it's, it's not a specific requirement of the pod stuff, but if we don't address it now, I don't want to get in a situation where later on somebody tries to say, well, we don't have to meet the tree save requirements of the design standards because we got this master plan approved. So things like that, I just want to make sure we're going through the process the right way and, you know, and, and clarify if you guys aren't asking for any other variances or modifications to the code, that's great. Then we can deal with that stuff later. But those were my main concerns that, that I brought up um, through some emails in the last couple of days. I raised additional question um, from the work group. I don't know that we finished the conversation, but currently the entire property is zoned commercial, and it, it appears we're only preserving about you know a, a fifth of that as commercial. And I, I appreciate we. I think most people on the planning commission like the pod because it gives us the ability to have a transitional residential portion, but we. It looks like we're limiting the commercial up front. I'm just curious from a technical standpoint, because the depth off Fairview Boulevard, and I'm, I'm just measuring this off a of PDF, not a CAD drawing, it looks like our limitations on any commercial building is gonna be 65 feet deep. What, what kind of commercial, I mean, has there been any studies to even know how palatable is that to a, a commercial developer? What, what can we even fit within a building structure that? so shallow well I will attempt to address all those questions thank you again for the opportunity to share our project with you tonight um, I'm going to start with just a little history Every, you know you guys have uh, mentioned the uh, work session that we had that was welcomed information and feedback from from you all um, you know the big takeaway 
that we heard was that uh, because we we came to you with a request to split zone this property. We were dealing with the seller of the property who wants to retain the commercial parcels along the front. In this configuration, that's what was provided to us. Um, and we were looking to split the back two pieces into uh, straight zoning for the RM8 and the, at the time the RS5, which are both supported um, land uses in the comprehensive plan. Um, we heard loud and clear that you wanted more control over that. You wanted buffers along the edges. Um, you wanted the open space amenities that come with uh, the pod. And I think you know those are the real benefits that this plan provides. It, it pulls lots back from the edges. It provides the buffers that the pod regulates. Um, it provides for uh, preserved and improved open space, which we're exceeding on all fronts. Um, and our original request was for RS5. We did hear suggestions from, from some folks about different lot sizes. Um, what this ends up with is the, the same product that we had hoped to build in the RS5 with bigger setbacks and with more open space and buffers. And so uh, this is the, um, you know, the, the folks that are here tonight that I'm representing are Lennar Homes and Quartera, who are a, a family of companies that do uh, both um, townhomes and single family detached. And so. This is the product that they uh, think will be real successful here in Fairview. Um, so with that, I just wanted to, to point that out, kind of where, where we started with the work session and how we got to where we are today. To quickly answer your question about commercial, that 65-foot depth is pretty typical for a, an inline retail space that provides for a, a variety of different users. Um, we don't have specific information from the seller who's retaining those parcels, but those would be well suited for the two south parcels and the one to the north has some more depth because he's got ideas for a slightly larger marketplace type use there that's that's hearsay but that's kind of what we've we've heard um in the background um <clears throat> i also to the commercial use um ethan if you wouldn't mind switching it dead to that slide there this one depicts really well some of the uh, encumbrances on the site we've got two um what weather conveyance channels um splitting the side up into about three chunks. There are some wetlands, uh, kind of jewels along that um, necklace there of, of the wet weather conveyances that we have to protect and maintain. And really what that does, it makes the property in large part not real, um, not real great for commercial. Uh, so being in that this mix of uses and this transition from commercial to townhomes to single family is in keeping with the um, comp plan, the residential transition designation, um, our, we came back to you with the RS10 pod in lieu of the RS5 straight zoning that we had requested, which is also supported by the, the comp plan to, to build in all those additional uh, criteria that ultimately benefits the project. And Commissioner Pape, to answer your question about variances, that the pod is a variance, and so we're working within the parameters of that pod to provide uh, these lot standards. So um, staff hasn't asked that we define um, they, they've defined any variances because they've confirmed that we're meeting the pod requirements. Um, we do have one variance listed on the cover sheet in the certificate of compliance. Um, staff had asked about sidewalks on both sides of streets, which we are doing on our public right of ways, but we have private driveways in the townhome area. And so we have sidewalks on one side in some instances, two in others, but it's just it's a it's a connected and cohesive network of pedestrian walkways, and so that's just a clarification more than a than a variance, I think. Um, so working within the pod, um, we do have that on the cover sheet. A couple other items: um, <clears throat> the phasing, uh, Commissioner Pape, you mentioned that in your email as well. On the cover sheet, we have a phasing, uh, a, a written phasing uh, description as well as a, a plan below that that shows the existing commercial and the townhome and the single family. The intent, as it's described, is to develop the townhomes first, uh, kind of in tandem and shortly followed by the single family. The infrastructure is shared and we'll develop, be developing that kind of starting from the front to the back. Um, <clears throat> there was a question about, uh, we did receive a couple of uh, kind of cleanup comments from the engineering staff this afternoon. There was some questions about the the new traffic study that we submitted with the project. So there are gonna be uh, turn lanes required on Fairview Boulevard with this project that we'll be constructing. It'll be split between 
the residential first uh, and the commercial second. And so with that north access point, we will be constructing a southbound left turn lane into the site, which will require widening of the road and tapering uh, to the south after the turn lane. So that's gonna be the residential requirement and then a, a duplicate southbound left turn uh, into the second access point with a, a northbound right turn in and another northbound right turn in on the north access by the commercial development. Um, the comment about um, tree protection, um, Ethan, if you wouldn't mind going to the grading plan real quick, but we do have the benefit actually in the back and along probably 60 to 70% of the edges where we're not grading into the buffer and in some instances not really beyond the back of those lots that have the nice big pie shape in the corner. So uh, we can certainly provide some additional clarification that there is the potential to do a significant amount of tree save in our buffers and along those uh, larger corners in those edges. So that's certainly our intent and we can provide some additional info with this submittal for uh, Board of Commissioners. Um, that is everything I had on my list. I'm here to clarify or answer any additional questions, but we are on a, a pretty, you know, we, we had to take a pause just based on how the um, work session timing went where we kind of lost a month there. Um, we, we would love to be able to answer your questions and agree to any conditions to move this project forward this evening. Uh, we've worked, I think we work great with staff. We have their recommendation to send this thing forward. Um, and, and again, if there's things we need to uh, clarify uh, with the condition, we're happy to do that tonight, but we would certainly appreciate your, um, your blessing to move this project forward. Additional discussion. Mr. Yeah, Clay. I'll just jump in first here. Um, just a couple things. On the, the list of deviations and variances, we all know a pod is a variance. That's the point, and that's why our code has a specific requirement to list how the pod is different from the way it would be developed if it was a straight zoning. That's the whole point, to ask the applicant to come in and list all the things, the ways it's different, so we know exactly what we're approving. Otherwise, we have to go in and measure lot sizes and things of that nature. Just one stupid little example is for RS10, the, the minimum lot width is 60 feet. You guys are using 55. Little things like that that you're not, no, nobody's gonna see on a plan if we just look at that. That's the whole point that there is a specific line item in our code to list the way this pod is different than it would be if it was straight zoning. That's the whole point of that condition and it just helps us with an approval. And you know, to me that's a very important thing when we're considering a pod. The, the other big piece of this is you know, you guys presented RS5 in the work session. We said we wanted them bigger. All you did was bring in RS10 as a pod that can then have the standards that are the same as RS5. So you didn't increase the lot sizes. So to me, that's the biggest thing. All the other things are, are things that we can deal with, but I personally won't, can't support this plan unless the lots in the back are bigger. And so I'm, I'm glad, I'm only one vote. So I'll stop talking here in a second and let everybody else chime in. But I think it's too much to try to add conditions to say, okay, yeah, we want to eliminate that back row of townhomes and we want all of the back to be R15 or something of that nature. I think that's just too much to try to approve with conditions. And that's why I made the motion to defer so we could work on some of those things. Now, you may tell us that that is not a possibility, that you can increase the lots in the back and then maybe we should vote on it. And I just think it's going to be a different outcome for you guys. So I'm trying to help get something that's palatable. So those are my thoughts and I'll stop talking now and let other people talk because I'm only one vote. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. McDonald. Mr. Pape mentioned a lot of things that I was gonna mention so I figured I'll just jump in, <laughs> take a swing at the pinata while I can. No offense to you. Um, so a lot of the things too I just have questions with with the pod and like I, I understand it, everything's open to discussion and, and the big thing that jumps off the off of it at me when I'm looking at it is, I guess one just to start off, clarification, private road, those are all gated, those are not open to the public, or what is that when on the design it says private road? It's, it's not a road that's the responsibility of the city to maintain, it's gonna be maintained by the townhome development. Right, okay. But within that, it's still gonna be accessible, trafficked, people come over, visit your house, people will have parties, all of that. Um, there's a subdivision in this town that half of it was built with side-loaded garage, garages and you can walk 
down those sidewalks every single day and you never have to swerve or walk out of your way to get off that sidewalk. The second half of that subdivision was built with front loaded sidewalks or front loaded front loaded garages where the sidewalks they're they're aesthetically pleasing I guess but as far as functionality goes they're not they're not very functional. Um, me on my feet not a big deal ADA I don't I mean you would be swerving all over the place because cars hang out all the way to the road and I believe yours are 20 feet setbacks on those on those lots so most of those garages aren't massive garages either so unfortunately they fill up with other stuff and they're not used for a car and then if you have two vehicles then you look at the the width of those private roads on I know that's not on the single family portion but it's a lot of houses a lot of residential space where you've got people are gonna be parking on the side of the road and it just starts to get into functionality of it all and I believe there's something in our zoning regs or our regulations that state that private roads should be built to city standards is that also a part of the variance that you well, are asking I think that's to that's the clarification these are not roads this is a it's a driveway it's accessing parking for um, for these units so I think it's just the clarification it's it's not a road it's it's the equivalent of being in a commercial or a multifamily driveway um, so we can call them big driveways, but I mean, there's still cars parked on the side, emergency vehicles, other people driving down. Obviously a school bus probably isn't gonna be wandering back in there, but I know in that neighborhood that I referenced that there's been many a morning where school buses are sitting in the middle of the road, blasting a horn to get someone to come out of their house and move their vehicle because two people park right across the street from each other and you can't get a full-size truck, let alone a school bus through it. So. Uh, I know school bus doesn't really play into this role, but really it just comes down to lot, the, the road width for me. It seems a little narrow for the amount of cars that I imagine are gonna be in that area. And especially with the single family, the setbacks for those sidewalks, I mean, you're gonna have cars parked all the way out to the sidewalk, that guaranteed to happen. We, we did uh, take that into account, and these driveways are 21 feet deep. It's not you know a minimum depth for a parking stall. You know We understand there are trucks and SUVs, and so we, we try to be cognizant of that because the um, the group that's going to be the property manager is is the HOA, and they're required to you know police that, and so that's that's something we do uh, consider early on in the process. Yeah, just again, like Mr. Pape mentioned, I'm just one vote, but that is my opinion. I would like to personally see a little bit more space, just to say, you know what, we're taking into consideration it on the front end instead of letting an HOA deal with the problem to police it. Um, on the back end. I think we could get in front of it, especially from the city. It's a pod. We can talk about these things. And, um, you know, I, I, it, it's not a huge change. Yes, it is some, you know, uh, some things are going to have to move around to make that work if that's what you decide to do. But um, that's, again, that's just my opinion. I have two additional questions as well. One, um, because of the RM8, uh, we are, this pod would be required to follow the supplemental conditions and it does state that uh, paved pedestrian walkway should be provided uh, that connects all living units and all recreational facilities so it's basically we would need to have a continuous network of sidewalks throughout it can't stop or terminate um, just just as a comment and then I also have a concern uh, with the edge uh, if we could please zoom back out just a little bit so we can see the plan left uh, side where the RM8 backs up to the commercial section. Uh, there's just no, there's no screening there. You know, anybody coming up to utilize the commercial properties are going to look right in the back of somebody's grill or vice versa. Someone's going to see a dumpster back there, a grease trap. And uh, there, there, my opinion, there needs to be some additional screening behind those townhomes, that high density townhome there. Uh, to me, that those are two fairly large comments. I agree there, there's a number of conditions here. Uh, we would have to list everything out tonight if, if for any reason the motion to defer is not passed and we were, were to move forward with this, um, just as a, as a reminder to the Planning Commission. So. Um, would there be any objection to adding additional screening behind no, those? None at all. And I think our approach to some extent has been that, you know, this is our zoning approval and we will be back for a, a detailed site plan. And 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we have not addressed some of the minutia of the site of the final development plan, which has a much longer list of criteria. We, we, we've met the list of the master development plan in the pod, and that's really kind of the, the metric that Ethan was asked or asked us to measure this project by. And so I, we 100 percent agree that there will be fencing in it and more landscaping and more screening that, that will go into that. We just, we needed to get over the first hurdle and understand what our, um, you know, what our zoning approvals are before we invest that, that next level of time and effort. And I will just, your comment about sidewalks, we do have an, a continuous interconnected network of sidewalks that we have a sidewalk on every single road through that. We have sidewalks through the open space that connect to the clubhouse and the parks that connect to the perimeter road. So, I mean, if there, as we get into the, the final development plan, if there's a little extra sidewalk you want here or there, we're, you know, we're totally open to that as well. I have a procedural question then for Mr. Hogan. Part of the request here is a zoning submission um, however, if, if anybody from the Planning Commission is, chooses to request a, a change in that, uh, it essentially voids the request for the application of that zone. I'm not, I'm not certain of the procedure of how you could request a modification to that. Do you have any additional insight? No, I, I think you, you bring up a good point. It's the obviously a lot of planning and, and time goes into the development of the the master plan they have submitted and if you if it was one small thing that that would be a different point but uh to undertake a lot of uh tweaking or amending i don't think would be advisable um and, and then obviously there's a motion to defer on the table right now um if for some reason that fails uh you, you're still it's a recommendation. You can still vote your conscience, and if it's no on the approval, then it'll still go to the Board of Commissioners regardless. It'll just be with a negative recommendation instead of a positive. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Mr. Chairman, I, I guess one way to help kind of decide which direction to go is, I mean, I threw it out there, but I don't know I heard a response. Is there any flexibility from you guys on the back lots and making them larger? I mean, you know, if, if you guys are going to tell us if we defer for 30 days and you're not going to change the plan, we might as well vote on it tonight. But if, you know, that to me, that's a big part. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm just a no vote with these current lot sizes in the back. If there's flexibility to that, I think we should take 30 days and get those lots the right size in the back. Mr. Pape, just from our staff standpoint, uh, looking at this from the 2040 plan, uh, you know, what they're showing is consistent with what the 2040 plan shows. Is there a preferred uh, lot size that you would prefer so that? Yeah, I mean, the 2040 plan is a guide and zoning is completely discretionary. We can decide whatever we want. That's why we're here to have this discussion and the consensus out of the, out of the work session as well as my personal preferences, at least R15. R I want to see those lots. I mean, I'd like to see, you know, the problem is if we go to R15 pod, now they can go to 50% of that. Now they can go down to 7,500 square foot lot sizes. I'd like to see RS20 pod with no, no lot smaller than 10,000 square feet. I mean, you know, you have RS20 all around there and you're going from 20,000 square foot lots down to six to 8,000 square foot lots. I'd like to see the minimum of, of 10. Um, and again, in order to do that, you're, uh, you're likely going to lose that row of townhomes, but all you have to do is lose that row of townhomes, slide the road over, make the lots bigger on both sides. And yeah, they're, I mean, they're going to lose density. That's why I'm asking the question. If they're going to tell us that's not a possibility from an economical standpoint, then we might as well vote on it like this. And I, again, I'm one vote. Everybody may look at this and say it's fine, but those are tiny lots back there. Um, in general, the, again, the overall concept of the design I think makes sense. I just would like to see those lots larger. Mr. Chairman, if I may add a point of information. Mr. Hogan. Just to clarify for the record, the, the decision of this board is an administrative decision. It's not a complete discretion. You, you are supposed to apply the standards that are set forth in the zoning code that's been approved by the Board of Commissioners. So 10203.32 uh, lists all the things for a master development plan. And Mr. Pape already pointed out one of those is the uh, subsection L there is the list of exceptions and deviations from all the subordinate regulations, which is 
certainly a valid uh, thing to base your assessment on, and that's that's not arbitrary at all. Um, but I, I just wanted to clarify for the record, it's not a it's not a complete discretion. It's uh, your decision needs to be based on the factors that are in the code, and the other one is the 2040 plan and whether or not it conforms. So, um, so those factors there, uh, the 2040 plan and subsection L that Mr. Pave already mentioned are, are certainly valid considerations. Thank you, Mr. Orman. And I'd like to just chat briefly offline here, but I, I would say that, you know, please keep in mind that this is a, this is a transitional parcel here, and to go from a, a townhome development with next door to 10,000 square foot lots, it's kind of, there's, it's a little disjointed there. We feel like, you know, given the kind of compact nature of this development and the, the minimal amount of single family that exists here, we, we don't have the, um, the depth, especially along the north side, um, to do the bigger lots. Um, you know, it, we, you know, if, if we were to reduce the lot sizes to the, to the RS-10, I mean, we'd, we'd cut them by two thirds. And that's, it, that's, I will say at some point it becomes uh, infeasible uh, uh, financially, but um, I mean, we feel like this is more compatible with the townhomes and then adding the buffer and the open space is what makes it compatible with the surrounding uh, single family lots. It is consistent with the 2040 plan. And, and you know, we, we would absolutely would put the, the, the variances on the table, but it's our understanding in dealing with planning that by working within the parameters of the, R, of the, of the pod that it didn't require that we, we list them specifically. So um, we can certainly add some of those variances uh, if that's how we're gonna define them. But I, I apologize if that was not, you know, if we're not on the same page on the pod versus the listed variances. I believe the density was a big portion, though, of our work se session. We, because of the number of existing residences that this particular project backs up to and is surrounded by, I think that was the reason why a lot of uh, planning commissioners had stated that comment in in the work session. So I just wanted to clarify that's that's why it's a little it's a little shocking to still see the higher density. Well, and and. Just to clarify on our end, we, we did lose about eight or nine lots. We went from 50 foot wide lots to 55 foot wide lots because the RS10 pod requires that we keep the seven and a half foot side yard setback. So we've got more room between homes and we do have fewer lots. So we, you know, there has been a reduction on the single family side since our work session. But that is a variance to the RM or the RS10, correct? Uh, that... w within the pod, it's, it's allowed within the RS-10 It would be a, a variation or, or a, it would be a, a con it would be abnormal in a straight zone district to see that and it would be requested as a variance in a straight zone district but as a pod overlay there are certain allowable changes that are within our zoning ordinance and those staff believes that the changes that are allowable they have utilized those to the best of their ability uh, and that the exception that was asked for on the cover page listed in their design certification which is what we require from every um, applicant is a design certification listing what variances and exceptions that they would like to seek from this board or from the board of commissioners specifically in a master development plan it has to be within the plan set uh, that's noted you've recently seen within the last seven or eight months uh, the Bellhaven project had all of the variances listed on the master development plan it was on the actual plan not a separate letter and so we asked them to put that within the uh, cover page of the document so that it was listed in the plan moving forward thank you mr. Creer. that that's moving forward that's the next stage as the master development plan following zoning is that correct no this is the master plan that's the whole point this is the master plan this this would be so the, we're achieving both this would be both this would be the uh, master plan with the overlay with the zoning. rezone okay yes not a rezoning of the base zone but a overlay onto that just to clarify a few things the reference to Bellhaven, I don't believe is correct they didn't list any variances but that's a whole different story we shouldn't be talking about that tonight but you know, it's our job as the Planning Commission to come up with a plan that we think is good for Fairview that fits into the 2040 Comprehensive Plan and all the zoning regulations. That gives us a lot of 
flexibility. The 2040 plan is a very open to discretion. I don't disagree that this potentially meets that. I also think that what I'm suggesting also meets that because of the broad range of things we can do. So us as a planning commission, it's our job to send something to the board of commissioners that we think is not only fits within all this, the ordinances and the comprehensive plan, but also is appropriate for what we see here. Again, my opinion is that those lots in the back should be bigger. You know, I think there's a great transition from the townhomes to the larger lots if you get rid of the road townhomes and you let the wetlands be more of that transition. Again, you guys are going to say that that's an economic impact, and that's, that, that is what it is. But yeah, it, it would reduce our townhome, and increasing lot sizes would greatly induce, reduce the single-family um, lot count as well. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, this is the plan that, that works for us tonight, and we certainly appreciate it. We heard at the... Um, work session, all the concerns about buffering and um, and the open space, and we believe, you know, all those added benefits balances out the impacts of the smaller lots and the, and the townhome density. So it's still the motion on the table currently is to defer. Um, Mayor Anderson. Okay. Were you named to say? My name's Kevin O'Brien with Corterra, the developer, 9005 Overlook. Wanted to see if I could potentially ask legal a question. Mr. Pape, I understand where you're coming from. You did just say you believe that we met the 2040 plan, but thought you had a better way to do it. Shouldn't they be voting on if they think it meets the 2040 plan, not how they would do it in the 2040 plan? They should be voting on the standards that I alluded to for the approval of a pod and a master development plan, planned overlay district. So um, there's a number of standards there. As I mentioned, it's 10203.3 um, and A through O and, and several subsections within that. So. All of those things need to be considered. So, Mr. Pape, you do agree that we're hitting the 2040 plan, just not the way you want it to go there? I agree that there are 35 different plans we could put up there that all satisfy the 2040 plan. And as a rezoning, it's our job to come up with something that we think is the best fit relative to the, not only the 2040 plan, but all the other things in the zoning ordinance. I think the zoning ordinance 20 different times talks about consistency with surrounding properties. Our surrounding properties are 20,000 square foot lots and things of that nature. So there is a huge amount of leeway in there. We, we are not a board that has to vote and say approval just because this particular plan may fit into the 2040 plan when 35 other ones will as well. It's... We've been working on this for a long time and trying to meet the feedback and hit the 2040 plan. You said you're not a guy that votes against it, except obviously in the last one, if you see fit, but you largely believe in it. We've come and we've tried to meet that um, every step along the way. The 2040 plan doesn't even call out RS20. It starts at RS15. You keep wanting RS20. I mean, we've brought something. We could come in with RS5 for it, and we've elected to go something bigger. You could come in with anything you want. And I said I would prefer RS20, but I said it would need to be RS15 because I know that's one of the things in the plan. Sure. We so can't come in I, with anything we want, but we came in with what was in the right. 2040 plan. But you also didn't listen from the work session when literally one of the commissioners said RS15 is a minimum. All you guys did was change from RS5 to RS10 pod which gave you the same standards as RS5. So you didn't, you didn't reduce any, any, you didn't increase the lot sizes in the back from the work session. And we, it, it, it's pointless to argue about this. I'm one vote. We should just take a vote. And well, I just want to point out that we've been here trying to work for a long time, trying to come and meet what you guys have asked for. We've spent a lot of money on our end. I don't know that we can continue much further. We had to get a contract extension to be here tonight. If we hit a deferral, I don't think we can get the time to go do it again. So uh, I I, also, I'm glad to meet with anybody anytime. My numbers and emails are all over the website. And between the work session and now, nobody reached out to me to get I, any I'm not input. allowed to, um, Mr. Pay. As a point of order, um, let's, let's get back to the discussion here. It, can legal the, confirm that I'm not allowed to reach out? No, sir, I, I can't give you an opinion. I'm here to give advice to the board. No, no offense. We're not supposed to reach out to you yeah, outside and, of this. And that's correct. All, all discussion here needs to be in this public forum. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep it to today. So if there's any additional questions from the board, Mayor Anderson. Okay, so just, just to clarify, so 
the road that goes out on to Highway 100, that's an easement through the commercial, right? It's deeded. Right it's deeded to you? I just yes. wanted to clarify. So that, uh, that road's deeded to you uh, by the owner of the commercial part, right? Uh, the parcel was. That there's, there's deeded accesses that currently exist in those two locations. When this property is developed, that, that will be a, a public right-of-way that will be built to city standards and handed over to the city. But you're doing the plan north first. And Correct. then after the commercial is completed, uh, plan south will will be developed. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, just, just curious, um, what is the need for a property management office on the site? Well, right now, so to address that, the homes will be for sale. Our business plan on for rent to address that or for sale, we don't know the economics right now. It's likely going to be for rent, but we're Lennar. We'll sell, we'll rent. It's going to be either a leasing or a sales office. Properties of this size will always have a sales office on it, uh, and then ultimately it will turn into a clubhouse for the townhomes as an amenity. So what you're saying is it's possibly for rent, but it would turn into a clubhouse if you choose to sell them the townhomes that's yes. correct but is there possible that that remains as a rental sales office and never no no it would ultimately become an amenity with shared workspaces something to be used by the townhome residents of course i don't know that that purpose can be stated in the master development plan well, I, I can speak to the size of that 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 accommodates pool equipment, restrooms, fitness, and then I think about a third is uh, kind of a flex office slash um, leasing space. So it's not it's not one big building that's all about sales or leasing. There are amenities that go with the pool that'll be part of that clubhouse facility. So the clubhouse would have like one room in it that's an office and then the rest of it no, would be? No, and, and we can share visuals with you of how we do this. It's a very open concept clubhouse that flows with kind of, there's there's work offices that you would be able to rent out and use. That's where sales and leasing will run out of in the opening phase, and then it transitions to you can book it and use it kind of into a large kitchen area that's shared, big open vaulted ceiling with bathrooms and a fitness off the side. So what would determine if it were going to be rented or um, sold the market it'll be the i mean this is two years from where we're out of the ground if we get approval and it's going to be where the market's at in two years that's all my only question on that is if you decide to sell the townhomes how are you going to deal with individual lots for that because right now you don't show that yeah, I'm not sure that the business plan has to be a part of the zoning request. You're right. It's an HPR. You're right, it doesn't. So right now, though, you don't have individual lots, so you couldn't sell them. So we would come back and replot and do an HPR. Any additional discussions? Reminder, the motion on the table is to defer... The last comment I want to make is just address the density. Um, the previous submission here was for 400 units, and we've taken that and come almost in half. Um, originally, we were at 60 singles and 200 towns. 260, we're down to 240. I'm not sure the economics for this site can justify purchasing it at much lower than where we're at. Obviously, the previous owner had a lot more on here. We tried to take the feedback of the neighborhood of here and do the best we can to get something built here that we believe Fairview needs. Fairview and Nashville in general has a shortage of housing. Thank you for your input. As a, uh, just a procedural reminder, um, if we vote yay on the motion to defer, um, it, it, I guess the question here for Mr. Hogan, at the end of the day, this is a re recommendation for the Board of Commissioners. That's correct, and I, and I think uh, just from what I've heard from the discussion, um, at the end of the day, it's not binding on the board. The, you, you have your interpretation of the, the regulations they've put in front of you, and then the board is, is going to make their interpretation. So nothing you do here is binding on the board. It's just a recommendation. So just, you know, as a, as a commentary here, we're not really providing a, a recommendation to the board if we defer tonight. So, if, you know, 
if the deferment does not pass, we at least provide some um, positive or negative recommendation. Mr. Pay. I just have a follow-up question to that. If we defer, can it go to the board with no recommendation from the Planning Commission? No, it'll, if they choose to submit another application, that application must be submitted to this board, so it'll come back to this board, um, and it'll be subject to the same standards of review. All right, uh, Ms. Bruce, let's, uh, let's call for a vote. This is a vote for motion to defer on PC 29-24, please. Mr. Pate. Aye. Mr. Cowley. Aye. Ms. Schilling. Nay. Ms. Williams. Nay. Mayor Anderson. Nay. Mr. Magner. Uh, nay. Ms. Shulist. Nay. Mr. McDonald. Nay. Mr. King. Nay. Motion to defer fails seven to two. So we're back on the original, or excuse me, I need a, I need to call for a motion, uh, a renewed motion on PC 29-24. I will uh, I will move a motion to approve PC 29-24. Uh, well, a motion to approve, and, and as a board, you could either, you know, you either um, approve that to pass as a positive recommendation. So yes, I, I'm, my motion is to, for a positive recommendation. So the the board would either approve or deny that. Mr. Greer, you had a clarification. The resolution states, uh, the City of Fairview Planning Commission hereby recommends the Board of Commissioners approve the rezoning request and master development plan with the following conditions, which is that it would be placed on the August 1st Board Commission meeting and then the September 5th Board of Commission meeting. So your motion to approve would be approving the resolution as written, which recommends approval to the board. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Greer. And that's similar to the previous votes that we've had tonight on the other resolutions. Do I have a second? Yeah. All right. yeah, you have I'm sorry. Yeah. Ms. Williams, thank you. Any additional conversation, discussion on the current motion on the table? Um, Mayor, um, um, Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes, Mayor. I know that I can't say one way or another, but I'm just going to encourage the sale of the, I'm just going to really encourage the sale of the townhomes and not rentals. I just want to put that out there. I hear you. That's all. Hearing no additional comments, um, Ms. Bruce, would you please call the vote? This is a motion to, um, recommend to the Board of Commissioners with the additional standards and conditions that were previously mentioned for PC 29-24. Mr. Magner. Nay. Ms. Williams. Aye. Ms. Schilling. Aye. Mayor Anderson. Aye. Ms. Shulist. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Nay. Mr. Kelly. Nay. Mr. Pape? Nay. Mr. King? Nay. Motion fails five to four for a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. However, this will be brought uh, before the Board of Commissioners at the August 1st hearing. So we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Moving on to uh, the next item of agenda here, we have item number eight. PC resolution PC 30-24, final plat Richville phase four. 
60.83 acres, map 43, parcels 23. Current zoning is R20 pod. Property owner, Brightland Homes of Tennessee LLC. Do I first hear a motion? Make a motion to approve PC 3024. Mr. Callie. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. McDonald, thank you. Mr. Greer, would you please read your staff report? David Parker with SEC has submitted on behalf of Brightland Homes a final plat for phase four of the Richville State Subdivision. The Richville State's development contains a total of 141 single family detached residential lots within five phases. Phase four is zoned R20 PUD and contains 51 single family detached residential lots on 60.83 acres. Additionally, phase four will extend Dutch River Circle and Shoal Mill Point which were both created in phase two of Richville States. Phase four contains two open spaces totaling 7.77 acres and a multi-purpose field containing 9.22 acres. Finally, phase four contains a lot for locating the step system. The step system lot contains 13.75 acres and is located north of lots 49 through 52 at the end of Shoal Mill Point. The three properties to the north are all zoned RSM 40. The properties to the south are both zoned RS 40. The properties to the east are all zoned R20 PUD and are phase one of Richville Estates. Properties to the west are zoned R20 and RS 40 and are located within the Montgomery Place, Lincoln Park and Stable Acres residential subdivisions. Staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the final plat for phase four of the Richville Estates subdivision in order to create phase uh, 51 single family residential lots, extend Dutch River Circle and Shoal Mill Point, create a new public right of way Wind River Court, create two open spaces, one multi purpose field, two detention ponds, one wastewater lot, and install all necessary stormwater, water, and wastewater infrastructure as resubmitted on May 30th, 2024. Thank you, Mr. Greer. Do we have a representative tonight of the, this application? Sir, would you state your name and address for the record? My name is Adam Sanders. I'm with SEC, the engineering firm uh, for this uh, project. We are in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, 850 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Thank you. Do you have any additional opening comments, uh, clarifications that would help us with our decision tonight? Uh, honestly, I do not. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, we'll open this up now for discussion. Any comments, questions from the Planning Commission? Okay, hearing none, Ms. Bruce, would you please call the vote for PC 30-24? Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. McDonald? Aye. Ms. Schilling? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Aye. Mr. Magner? Aye. Ms. Schulist? Aye. Mr. Pape? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries 9-0. Proceed your time, sir. Moving on to the agenda this evening. Still under new business, we have um, bonds and letters of credit. There are none listed here. Next item would be reports for discussion and information. First, starting with uh, the planning staff. Thank you all for your consideration with all of our individual projects uh, tonight. Our next month is looking a little lighter than it has been the last couple of months. I think last month we had 10 items, tonight we had eight. Uh, it's been a few months of quite a bit of work that y'all have all put in, so I appreciate everything that you've done. Congratulations, Mr. Magner, on becoming chairman. Ms. Shulis on becoming vice chair. And Mr. King, welcome to the Planning Commission. Hope you enjoyed your first meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Greer. City Manager, Mr. Donnery. Thank you. Nothing tonight. Thank you, sir. City Engineering. I want to echo what Ethan stated. You know, thank you for your questions and thank you for your consideration. So. Thank you very much. Uh, City Attorney, Mr. Hogan. No report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Planning Commission Roundtable. 
Uh, I'm just going to start with Mr. Pape. Uh, any comments uh, tonight? Yeah, just real quick. I know sometimes it seems like I'm being antagonistic and stuff, but I really do appreciate all staff's efforts and the back and forth we have and all the time they spend talking to me and, and answering the questions. And, you know, I'm just trying to make sure we do the best we can for the city. But thank you all for, for all your input and all the back and forth the last couple of days as we approach this meeting. Thank you. Mr. Pike, thank you. Mr. McDonald. Uh, just Mr. Magner, congratulations, as well as Ms. Shulis. Um, and then the same to echo, welcome, Mr. King, and nothing like on the first night having the uh, deciding vote fall in your lap. That's always, it's always fun, but welcome to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Mr. Cowley. Uh, just echo what Mr. Pape and Mr. McDonald said, and uh, always appreciate the staff's hard work. Thank you. Ms. Shulis. Nothing from me tonight. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. King, any comments uh, for tonight? And uh, I just appreciate all the welcomes. I'm glad to be here and looking forward to being a part of the commission. Thanks. Ms. Williams. No, I appreciate all the passion. It just shows how much we care about our city. And I want to welcome our new leadership and our new team member. And I'm looking forward to uh, continuous discussions and future outcomes. And thank you, City of Fairview, for the outstanding firework display. It was wonderful. Thank you. Ms. Schilling. She took everything I was going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mayor Anderson. Um, congratulations, Mr. Magner, Ms. Shulist. Welcome, Mr. King. I know you're going to enjoy being on this board. It's a great group, and we all have, um, a, you know, a lot of passion for taking care of our community. So that's exciting. I uh, just want to put out there that um, at Thrivent Financial, 7101 Adams Drive, 8.30 a.m. is our round town coffee uh, tomorrow morning, and that's a good way to network and meet different business owners out here. So I encourage everyone, if they're available at 8.30 in the morning, to go just right down the street to Thrivent and uh, support our um, Patty Carroll, our economic development officer. Uh, we Our last event was a great success, had a lot of people here, about 50. So it's a good networking opportunity. So, yes. Oh, yes. So um, uh, Richard Ross will be giving the report on uh, from our July 3rd event at the uh, coffee in the morning. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, hope to serve the community in this new capacity, and uh, we'll, we'll strive hard. I, I echo it's really nice to have the uh, the diverse background experience and knowledge that this particular board has like right now I, I really feel like this is one of the strongest um, representation of both the community and, and the professional environment in which I think we can serve this community um, we definitely want to continue to observe and respect the opinions of the existing residents who've lived here for a long time and invested in the community and also develop a nice living environment uh, as the city continues to grow and speaking of growing i continue to echo all the service that um, the city continues to do we're it's an unprecedented number of projects um, i know like spring hill and franklin have experienced it but for this community it's significant so thank you very much um, coming up, I think we're going to um, work on a, uh, an additional workshop that will focus on a little bit more on the different types of submission packages and, and to assist the board in how we can review those and maybe some focus areas of what to look for. Uh, that, that could be a part of our continued training. Uh, I'll try to get with uh, uh, anybody that, uh, that we need to focus on that. Additionally, uh, we, we did receive copies of the Roberts Rules book. It's a nice guideline for kind of procedures and policies. If anybody does not have a copy, we might request that. So uh, feel free to reach out and uh, we'll get another copy of that. Uh, Mr. King, welcome aboard. Look forward to your insight and purpose. That said, do I have a motion tonight uh, for adjournment? Motion. Motion, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>